For those of you who have watched my previous videos, you'll know that I've always been very interested in fretwork. Even from a young lad, watching my dad using his treadle fret saw, I developed an interest in fretwork and indeed the hobbies and handicrafts companies. And if you look through my videos, you'll find several videos covering the subject of hobbies and handicrafts. Uh, I was about to make a design, uh, a very old design, and I thought what I'd do, I'll film it to show you the process. So, inside this old book, I found a picture of a butterfly bracket, which I think is rather nice. And, and this is it here. Um, it's just a, just a small picture, it's only two inches uh, tall, and so obviously you can't cut it out from that. But with a bit of work, I can scan that into my computer, and then using something like Photoshop, I can recreate the original pattern, or hope to, and I'm just going to show you that now. So that's just the original photo, that's where I start with. So I'll just put the book out of the way for now. So this is my cutting plan that I've created on Photoshop uh, to cut the bracket out. As you can see, it, it's not too bad, it's perfectly clear for cutting out. I'll just show you how I create the pattern, just the basics of it, you understand. Okay, well I just wanted to show you roughly the process uh, of what I do with these designs. Now, uh, I'm going to be using Photoshop just to show you this. It's only an old version, and let me say at the start, I'm no expert on Photoshop, so, uh, you know, I just use it for what I need. Uh, this is the path, the picture in the book, as you can see, it's a tiny image here, about two inches tall. I've scanned this page into the computer, and I'm now going to show you on the computer what I do with it. Uh, this isn't going to be a comprehensive... Uh, video showing you how to do that. Perhaps if there's any, enough interest I might at a later date do a video showing the, some of the processes of how to convert a pictures into a design sheet. But for the purposes of this particular video I'm just going to show you on my screen now what I do with this particular pattern. Right so here's the page now scanned into my computer and I've uh, put that image into Photoshop. It's only an old version of Photoshop but it'll do for this particular job. I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see the image. There's the image there. We're, we're talking about uh, a two inch maximum image, so obviously the quality isn't gonna be wonderful. Now what I've done, I've now transferred that image into Photoshop, and this is in the actual uh, page now, and there's the image. I've expanded it out, that's an A4 sheet, and what I've done, I've expanded it out to to approximately the size I want on an A4 sheet. Obviously you could make it smaller or larger. If you want it really large, you can do it on an A3 size. Uh, just scan the original in, uh, and then enlarge it on, on your image editing program. By the way, it doesn't have to be Photoshop. It could be Affinity, I use that as well. There are quite a few different ones, and lots of free ones you can use that'll do the same job, but I happen to know how to use this, so I'm showing you this. So there's the image scanned in. What I do next is, uh, I'll go through various processes to create it and, and clean it up. Now this particular image is, is quite good actually, it's not bad resolution, especially when you consider that we're talking about something that was printed in a book 112 years ago approximately, because it's 1907, so it's about 112 years old, and it's still pretty good detail actually, considering it's only a tiny picture. So what I do then, I just use various tools within Photoshop. I do it all by hand, and it's quite quite time consuming. So you can see I've drawn an ellipse here, uh, an elliptical marquee they call it, and then I've dragged it around. I'm doing this top wing part first. I do it all individually, and then I've shaped it using the warp tool, the selection, uh, to get approximately that that nice line down that side of the butterfly's wing. And then using the brush tool, I filled in this side with white. And then I reverse the selection, like that, and then I can do the other side in black. You can't see it very clearly. I, I will zoom in a little bit so you can see better. You can see better what I'm doing. I'll just move that down. Now you can see there now. Now I've got a clearly divine line down here. I'll just deselect it. That's the selection. Now you can see down here, if you look at the wing on the other side, it's a ruffled edge and it's not suitable for doing anything and I've just painted over it, that's not a matter. On this side, now there's a clear line around here, a nice cutting line. Well, when I've done the whole pattern in this manner uh, and cleaned it all up and other things I have to do, for example, this shelf here has to be removed. So I'm gonna have to go through along here and paint all this detail out. This is part of the shelf. So what I would do with this is I'd draw a, um, a rectangular marquee around this, for example. As I say, I don't want to go into too much detail now. That you, you can see it's not actually accurate, this particular 
design because although it fits that end it's different there but these were drawn by hand many years ago they didn't have computers and copiers and all the stuff we got today so when I when I fill that in to remove that shelf uh, I shall do it according to my selection so I'm just going to move the selection down a bit and I'm going to paint that into using the brush tool I'm going to paint that white that because all of that is going because that's going to be the original shelf part so I don't need that then I would reverse the selection now I can paint all around there, the white's protected, in black, you see. Don't worry about the white bits in the middle, I can get rid of those later by a different method. So as you can see, I'm only doing the top just to show you. Now I remove the selection. Now you can see again, I've got a clearly divine line along there, uh, which would be ideal for converting into a pattern. And then I go through the whole whole of the pattern doing the same thing, like these leaves here, for example, this bit's missing there, look. I can rebuild those. And what I would normally do is I do one side of the pattern first, and then I'd re, uh, I would then copy it and paste it onto the other side so that um, I only have to do one side, not both sides, in this case, apart from the flare on the bottom. So that's the process of doing it. Eventually, after I've done all that, I end up with a pattern like this. And that's my completed pattern, and I've done it in the Hand of Crafts and Hobbies green colour, because uh, I try and keep it authentic. And uh, but that's, that's not my cutting pattern, that's the original thing. And then that's what I create it like that as an actual printable pattern with all the details on and the information. Um, the reason I'm doing this, I don't need this for my own cutting, but I am I'm working on a website and I do plan to put these patterns on the website so other people can download and print them just to keep them alive really because I don't want them to die. Uh, and disappear. Anyway, so then I create a pattern like that, uh, which I save on my computer, and I also create one like this, which is a line drawing, because I find these are much easier for cutting out. It's much easier to cut along a line than it is to cut along a solid line like that. If you try and cut around that and keep all the solid colour in, it's very difficult following the line, but I find, it's only me personally mind, other people might have a different idea, Personally, I find it a lot easier cutting around a line like that. I do put a, a delicate, a light fill in it just to show it up, but that is basically the cutting pattern, and that's the piece I, I print out generally um, for when I want to cut the pattern out, which is what I'm going to do shortly. Uh, just, just to show you, that's, one, that's the butterfly one we're working on at the moment. I just want to show this other pattern here. Uh, this is a, an old handicraft design of an artistic bracket and as you can see I've scanned it in the quality is awful up around the top here the actual pattern here has disappeared on this side there's not much showing there the holes aren't central and down here there's bits missing and look at this at the bottom and I just wanted to show you what I've actually done to this one to change it into a printable pattern and there's my version of it I've done it this time in blue because handicrafts did some of these patterns in in blue sometimes they used a maroon color as well uh, whereas Hob is always stuck, generally speaking, with um, green. But as you can see, that's not bad actually. I've created that from that. And I think it's quite nice. And it's not everybody's cup of tea. Obviously, a lot of people don't like fretwork, but I quite like it. My granddad did fretwork. Uh, my dad did fretwork. I do fretwork. And one of my grandsons also a keen fretworker. But that's roughly how I do the designs anyway. Um, so I hope you found that interesting. If anybody is interested, I will do another video at some point showing you what, all the various processes I use. But um, for purposes of this, I just wanted to show roughly how I created some of my patterns. I've already got some wood here that I'm going to use. You'll notice I've got two pieces, a piece of finished plywood and some mahogany. Now, this mahogany is actually some old uh, mahogany door frame that I was given, and I've cut it up and joined it together, there's two pieces there and it's joined down the middle as a glue join, but you can't, if you look at it, it's quite good, you can't see the join. I shall fit the two pieces of wood together like this in a sandwich, and then I'll glue the design sheet on the top, and then I'll cut it, cut the two out together. The advantage of that is, of course, is you get two for the price of one, so to speak, it only say, you only got to cut one out and you get two. 
but the second one is really considered a sacrificial item because if you're going to get any cut out on the back which spoils the work it'll be on the second piece which I'm not too bothered about and this piece will be the cleanest cut in fact it'll, it'll need virtually zero sanding apart from getting the pattern off the front because the cut out will be minimised because of this on the bottom so and also if you're careful the bottom one will be usable as well and there's a good contrast between dark wood and light wood you can put a light backing on this one and the dark backing on that and you've got two attractive designs I think. So that's what I'll be doing. So I'll be joining those together, sticking the pattern on, then we do some cutting out. But you'll notice I've created a small shelf here and a shelf bracket that fits on here to finish the design. Obviously you can't, from the picture, you can't work out that. You've got to do your own. So now I've cut out the pattern. There's the bracket itself, which I shall place about there. And then I've got the little shelf which can go down there, look, and then the shelf support, I can put that down there. When you're doing this, try and look at the grain of the wood and place it the strongest. For example, you don't want to put the bracket that way because the, the grain's going that way and it's more likely to break off. Um, so it's obviously better to put it that way, like that. To glue the pattern onto the timber, I just use these cheap glue sticks. You can buy these in pound shops, there's about four for a pound or something like that. It's only cheap stuff, but it does the job. You want to make sure all the all the pattern is stuck down firmly. The last thing you want is if you've got patches where there's no adhesive, and then when you're cutting, it starts to flap up because it'll be awkward to cut out that way. Just put a sheet of paper on top when you're leveling the pattern down because uh, otherwise you'll kink it up. There we go. See, that's okay. Now I'll just do the same with the shelf brackets. So I've got the pattern on the on the wood now, on the work, and the next thing to do is to uh, fix the two pieces of timber together for cutting. Uh, there's just the various ways of doing that. You can use double-sided sellotape if it's strong enough, and that will hold the two pieces together, but don't put it all over, just put dots of it, if you like, little patches of it. Uh, you can hold the thing together with sellotape if they're the same size, or you can put pins through. I use a combination of all three methods, usually. It depends on the design. Um, and how intricate it is and everything, but uh, you know, pins will do it, but they'll be chewed through the bottom, so make sure that you, you sand them, grind the pins down, otherwise they'll, they'll stick on your saw table, and apart from the fact that it'll mark the saw table, it'll make it more awkward to control it. So uh, if you use pins, do make sure they're, if they're you know, because you've got to put them through the plywood, which is thin, and if you use pins, they'll stick out from the other side. So you've only got to be careful and nail them through the back and make sure you don't go through the parts of the pattern that you're keeping uh, and then bend them over on the front where they won't bother. Or if you put them through this way, then you've got to grind the ends down so they don't hit on the table. But sometimes it's better to use a bit of double-sided sellotape to hold it together or just put some sellotape around the edges. But there we are, that's ready now. Now what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go get myself a cup of tea and that'll give it time for the pattern to dry out before I do any more work on it. See, now I've got the two pieces of wood about the same size, it's going to be easy to sellotape the edges together to keep them together while I'm cutting. Okay, uh, that's done now. Uh, so now you've got to decide really what you're going to do first. Um, are you going to cut the outline of the pattern or are you going to cut the internals first? And in this case, I'm going to concentrate on the internal cuts because if I cut the outline first, there are some rather delicate parts here on these leaves that will tend possibly to break off whilst I'm manhandling it. So what I shall do, I shall do the cut internal cuts first, now I'll cut the main thing out after I've done all that, last of all probably. Uh, so the next job to do is to actually drill some small holes to put the saw blade through, so we'll do that now. Uh, and I'm just going to drill these through. Use a piece of old timber on the back when you're drilling, it's always the best way because it helps avoid cut out where the drill comes through and you don't want to drill too many holes in your bench, do you? Although I've got plenty in mine. So we just drill these through. I'll put that one down there a lot. There we go, that's all you need to do. And you see it's quite clean on the back. Uh, that's because I'm drilling it, drilling it on this old piece of chipboard. So that's that, so I'm gonna drill another one here. Anyway, get the idea, I'm not gonna go through all this because it'll bore you to death. There's more interesting things you can do. You could even watch telly for a bit. Um, although, I don't know, it might be more interesting drilling the, watching me drill the holes out, mightn't it? So I'll come back when I finish doing the drilling. Mm -hmm. 